The Powwow Dog by Joseph Bruckhack, illustrated by Dale DeForest. The Old House. The old house at the edge of the reservation sat empty. It had something like a little house built on top of it. That's called a cupola, Marie thought. All the windows were dark. They looked like staring black eyes. The shingles needed paint. The metal roof was, was rusted. Its front door stood partly open. The only thing nearly new was a garage on the side. The garage door was pulled down. That place looks haunted, Marie said. It sure does, Jamie agreed. Grandpa slowed down the van to look. Nobody there now. Your grandma and I went to Indian school with the man whose family owned the place, Thomas Jefferson Jimerson. He used to live there. Is he, you know, Marie said. As far as I know, Grandma said, he's still alive. He moved away about 10 years ago. He went to Buffalo to be close to his grown children. They have good jobs there. Hard to get work around here, you know. We haven't seen Tommy in years. Jamie turned around in his seat to stare at the house. Did he see something white move next to it? A shiver ran down his back. Then they turned a corner and lost sight of whatever it was. Here we are, Grandpa said. A broad field stretched out in front of them. Other vans were already there. Jamie could see people setting up their booths. A fire burned brightly in the center of the dance circle. Best powwow grounds in this part of your state, of York State. The only powwow grounds in this part of New York, of York State. Looks like they're setting up um, a fire pit and there's like all the cars pulling up and there's some tents. Looks like it's a lot of fun. By early afternoon, the powwow grounds were crowded. Folks of all sorts, native people and non-native, African-Americans and people who had Spanish accents, men and women wearing leather jackets and motorcycle boots. Grandpa chuckled. Bikers sure love us Indians, you know. For a while there, I had Harley. The twins tried not to stare, but it was so interesting. Some people looked and dressed as if they had come from other countries. There were, they were speaking languages the twins had never heard before. Grandma nodded in the direction of a young woman wearing a, comf wearing a colorful sari. The young women, woman came to their booth. I'll bet she's a student from the university. It's only three miles from here. Hello, she said. Kalupo, Grandpa said. You're welcome here. The woman beamed a bright smile. Thank you, she said. So are you American Indians? Grandma smiled back. That is what they call us. We just call ourselves people. Ah, uh, well, I am Indian, too. India Indian. I am, I am from Calcutta. Grandma and the young woman began talking about Grandma's beaded bracelets. Before long, the young woman brought three bracelets, including one Marie had made. This one is my favorite. Oh, did you see that? Whoosh! The twins looked to where the one young woman pointed. Across from them was a stand selling buffalo burgers. The Seneca chef read the sign. The chef stood behind the table. He had his hands on his hips. His lips were pressed together, and he was shaking his head. What happened? A large dog grabbed food and ran with it that way. The twins looked. The dog was nowhere to be seen, but Marie noticed something she had not seen before. Beyond the far end of the field, it stuck up above the trees, the cupola of the haunted house. Nobody goes in there. At 2 p.m., the dance competition started. Everyone crowded around, around the dance circle. No customers till the dance is over. 
Grandma said. Your kids, go all right, go watch the dancing. Maybe you can find another mystery to solve, said Grandma. Look, we could go see, see better up there. The twins walked to the edge of the crowd. It was hard to see with so many people around the dance circle. Off to their right, the ground rose up to make a little hill. No one was on it. But before they reached the hill, four other children climbed on it. Jamie and Marie stopped. This is our hill, the biggest kid said. His t-shirt had the design of an eagle on it. Jamie and Marie started to walk away. Hey, the biggest kid said. Want to join us? I'm Cody. And I'm Bear, said the second boy. Nikki, said the second girl. And this is our reservation. There's plenty of room in Sunflower. Soon, all six of them were talking like old friends. It turned out two of the fancy dancers were Cody's brother. They all watched until the competition was over. I'd be out there, but I sprained my ankle in lacrosse last week, said the one boy. Chapter 4, A Ghost Dog When they got back to their booth, Grandma was standing in front of it, laughing. Oh, my, he said. You missed the show. W what happened, Marie asked. That big white dog came back, took another burger with the Senka chef and his ba why his back was turned. Really, Jamie asked. Really, Grandma said. It ran so fast it disappeared among the cars in the parking, uh, park in the parking part of the field. Like a ghost. Grandpa said. That is spooky, Jamie thought. Did anyone chase it? Marie asked. Not really, Grandma said. It stopped and looked back, like it wanted to be chased. Then it took off again like a shot. Everyone's too busy at their booths to waste time chasing something that they can't catch. Maybe it's a ghost dog, Grandpa said. He chuckled again. No way you can catch a ghost. A ghost dog? Another chill went down Jamie's back. Then he had an idea. Wait a minute, he thought. He looked over at his twin and she nodded. Maybe they could solve the mystery. Grandpa, which way did that dog go? Towards those trees. Grandma looked over her, at her over her glasses at the twins. You two have an idea, don't you? Can we take a little more time off from helping you? Chapter 5, Buffalo Burgers Marie and Jamie talked over the plan. Is your phone charged, Marie asked? Good. I'll wait here where I can see the Senka chef's booth. I'll go way over there to those trees, and I'll catch... And I'll call you if anything happens. Jamie walked past the hundreds of parked cars to the strip of forest between the powwow grounds and Frog Street and sat down to wait. The late summer sun felt good in his face. He closed his eyes. Suddenly his phone began to ring. The Buffy, sh the Buffy Street Marie song he used at the tone as the tone for Marie. I guess that's like the tone on his phone, like on his cell phone when it rings. He grabbed the phone out of his shirt pocket. Big sister, coming your way. Jamie looked up just in time to see a white streak headed straight for him. He had to step aside or he would have been knocked down by the big dog. It stopped to look back at him. A buffalo burger dangled from its mouth. Then it turned and ran. It went straight to old man Jimerson's house and through the open door. Whoosh! Get over here, quick! He waited until Marie reached him. The old house looked even spookier now. Are we really going over there? We have to. Hello. Jamie took a deep breath. 
Okay, he said, trying to sound as brave as his sister. They walked over to the old house and paused at the front door. Marie, le Marie leaned in and said, Hello, her voice echoing. A loud woof bounced off the walls inside. Jamie grabbed his sister's hand. Then they heard a weak voice. Help! Oh, help! I am in here! They tiptoed inside. An old native man lay on the floor at the bottom of the stairs. The white dog crouched next to him, wagging his tail. Thank the Lord, the old man said. Been in here since I fell down the stairs last night. Three buffalo burgers sat on the floor next to him. One of them was half eaten. The twins stayed with Mr. Jimerson until the emergency squad arrived. You kids did well, one of the emergency squad men said to them. Who knows how long he might have been stuck there. I guess no one saw him coming in late last night because he's put, he put his car in the garage and shut the door. It looked like the place was still empty. Is he going to be all right? Marie asked. Can't say for sure, but his vitals are good. I'm guessing he broke a hip. Children, Mr. Jimerson waved at them from the stretcher. Go ahead, the emergency squad man said. I guess you saved my life, Mr. Jimerson said. Now well, thank you. Marie shook her head. It was your powwow dog. She patted the head of the big white dog leaning against her. You said you're at the powwow with your grandparents? The longbows? Jamie nodded. So you're the grandkids of my old school friend, Bunny and Flash. Marie looked shocked. Mr. Jimison smiled. That's how everyone called them back then. Will you say hello for me? Of course, said Marie. One more thing. Can you take care of Wolfie till my kids can come get him later today? I can see he likes you. Jamie and Marie both nodded. Good. Leash is there by the door. Here. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a $20 bill. Jamie shook his head. You don't have to pay us. Mr. Jimerson laughed and then made a face. The laughing hurt his head. Nope, he said, but somebody's got to pay for those buffalo burgers. The end.